In this part we want to analyze the running time of the randomized incremental approach of this one here, where we first compute a random permutation of our half planes and then incrementally add one half plane to the solution and only update the optimum whenever it changes. And while in the worst case this takes all of n squared time, the expected running time is much better. The expected running time is order of n. How can we prove this? Oh, well, this is randomized. So the running time we need for a single step depends on in which case we are. It is order of 1 if the optimum doesn't change, and it is order of i if the optimum does change. So in order to analyze the running time, we want to have some random variable that tells us in which of these two cases we fall into. And this is our variable xi. Now variable xi is 1 if our optimum does not lie in the half plane that we add. So if the optimum has to change. And if it's a 0 it, if the optimum lies in the half plane, so if it doesn't have to change. Now the running time of step i is i in this case and 1 in this case. So the total expected running time of the algorithm is for every step i, if xi is 0, then this here is a 1, then we take order of 1 time. And if xi is 1, then this is a 1, then we take order of i time. This is the standard way to do this if we have a binary random variable. When xi is 1, then this here is a 0, and this gives us the running time order of 5. If xi is 0, then this here is a 0, and this here is a 1, and this gives us the running time for that case. But we still want to simplify this. And to that we use the linearity of expectation. It says the expected value of a sum of random variables is the sum of the expected values of the random variables. And that means we can pull out all the stuff here. So we can pull out this part and we can pull out this part of the expected value. And then it looks like this. We have the sum, I'm leaving out the indices here, of the expected value of 1 minus xi times order of 1 and the sum of the expected values of xi times order of i. And this is very easy to estimate. Let's just say in the worst case this here is always a 1, then we sum up our n times order of 1, so this whole thing here is only order of n. On the other hand, here, this whole thing, this is order of i times the probability that xi is 1. So we get at most order of n plus the sum of the probabilities that xi is 1 times order of i. So for the running time, what we have to figure out is, what is the probability that xi is 1? So what is the probability that the optimum changes in one step? Now let's fix the half planes that we have. So we compute the random permutation of the half planes and now we have um, hi is the first one in the random permutation, h2 is the second one and so on. So we have our fixed i random half planes. Now we want to figure out what is the probability that the optimum solution changes when hi is added. So the optimum solution in capital HI is different from the one in capital HI minus 1. How can we figure out what this probability is? Do you have any idea? This is tough. But we will use a trick. Instead of going from the solution of HI minus 1 to the one of HI, we go backwards. Instead of adding HI to HI minus 1, we just remove it from hi. Now I again ask you the question, what is the probability that the optimum solution changes? When does the solution change? The solution changes if the optimum lies on the segment that's defined by the half plane hi. So the optimum is always a corner of our current convex region. And every corner is defined by the intersection of two boundaries. And it only changes if it lies on the intersection of the boundary that corresponds to hi and another one. 
So we must have the optimum solution right now lies on the boundary of HI and the boundary of some other segments. How many corners do we have in the convex region here? We already know from earlier if we have n half planes then our convex region has at most n corners. And how many of these corners belong to HI? It can only intersect two others, so there can be at most two corners that lie on the boundary of HI. So we have in step i we have i corners, two of those lie on the boundary of Hi. So if you remove a random half plane, the probability that this contains the optimum is only 2 over i at most. And this is totally independent of the choice of our Hi. Whatever solution we take, let's, let's draw it, we have any convex region here and each of these boundaries belongs to some half plane and I have some point and I remove a random one. If it's this one or this one then the solution changes. So for these two it changes and if it is one of the others, the i, the minus two remaining ones, then it doesn't change. So if I pick any random half plane, the probability that it's one of these two is two over i. So the probability that our hi is exactly one of these two is at most 2 over i. And now we can plug this back in. So the probability that we are in this case is only 2 over i. So we have order of n plus 2 over i times order of i and that's again order of n. And now we've proven that this randomized incremental approach runs in order of n expected time. And the technique that we used here, that's the so-called backwards analysis. Instead of figuring out what's the probability that an event happens if I add something, you go backwards. What's the probability that this event happens if I take this away? And that way you can figure out what the probability here is. And that's a very strong proof technique, something that you use all the time when you have randomized algorithms. And while it is a bit counterintuitive in the beginning, just try to draw it again for yourself. Draw a convex region and think about it. Pick a random half plane. And only if the optimum lies on the boundary of this one, it changed in the step before. And that's how we get the argument. That's it for this lecture, and thank you for listening.